My name is Hannah, and this is my No Buy Year. Okay guys, it's time for my November favorites. If you saw my November check-in, which I think I should have posted on Friday, then you will know that November was an absolute whirlwind for me, and I didn't have time to do anything. I didn't have time to think about shopping, which is what I was talking about in that check-in. But I also didn't even really have as much time to apply makeup and to wear makeup as I usually do. And I was sick for basically two weeks out of the month, and so I was kind of minimizing the amount of makeup that I was wearing. I just don't have very many of the kinds of techniques, new favorite techniques and things that I usually have because my makeup styles didn't evolve very much this month. I was like doing the best that I could with what I had. I don't have very many beauty, I think I just have like one beauty favorite, but I do have some other favorites. When I looked back over the month, there were a number of things that jumped out to me that I wanted to share with you. So let's go ahead and get right into the meat of the video. Before I talk to you about stuff, I have two channels that I want to share with you two channels that I have been absolutely loving, especially over the past month. And these are channels that I've been watching for a while, but I want you to know about them. I think that maybe a lot of you have never come across these channels, so I'm going to tell you about them really quickly before I start the rest of the video. The first channel, although that's not fair to say, this is the video. These are two of my favorites. I feel like they're absolutely valid. They're part of the meat of the video. so. Here they are. The first one is Mia's Virtual Vanity. You guys, if you like watching Will I Buy It videos, and if you like really, really sassy anti-haul roasts, you have got to watch Mia. Her Will I Buy It videos, and I think at this point she's doing one a week. I think she tried to go down to once every two weeks and it was just too much, so I think she's back up to doing one a week. When her Will I Buy It videos pop up on my newsfeed, it's one of those exact types of YouTube videos that just makes me so excited. Like when it comes up, I'm like, yes, Mia filmed another Will I Buy It? And I put it right at the top of my watch later list and I watch it as soon as I can. They are so, so good. She's, she's very sassy. I mean, she's no holds barred. She does not care what anyone else thinks, which is so wonderful to watch, so empowering, so encouraging. And she's also just really, 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 really smart really smart. She's Romanian. She lives in Romania. Her grasp of the English language and of English idioms is better than that of almost anyone else on YouTube. It's unbelievable. I enjoy watching her for a ton of reasons, but that might be one of the main ones. I just love listening to her talk. And that's part of why I wanted to bring her up on this channel, because I frequently get the comment from you guys that you like watching me because you like listening to me talk. And if that's one of the reasons you watch me, then you should watch Mia. Her vocabulary is extensive and creative, and she's funny, and she's really beautiful, and she does good makeup. I mean, she's just, she's a gem. She's an absolute gem, and her channel's growing very slowly. I don't know why the algorithm isn't noticing her or picking her up or whatever it is, but every time I go to her channel, she hasn't gained very many new subscribers, and I simply don't understand why, because to me, she is an absolute star in the making. So I will link her down below. Go and check her out. The other channel that I want to tell you about is Genevieve Fields. Genevieve came to my attention because of my sunscreen thing. I was trying to find a new mineral sunscreen and a ton of you were like, Genevieve Fields does these really extensive specific sunscreen reviews, meaning that she'll review one sunscreen in just one video. So I went over to her channel to check her out because of that, but it turns out that her sunscreen reviews are to me not even, I mean, as wonderful as they are, and they are. To me, the loveliness and quality of her sunscreen videos does not even account for a fraction of the loveliness and quality of her overall channel and her overall presence on YouTube. One very specific reason, I like watching Genevieve because, and this is true of Mia as well, I want to be her friend. <laughs> like, I, I like watch Mia and I'm like, when can we hang out? When are you coming to visit LA? That's how I feel when I watch Genevieve too. I, I watch her channel and I'm just like, can you be my friend, please? and thank you. But one reason specifically that I wanted to recommend Genevieve to you guys is because she's doing a no buy year. She just started a no buy year. I think that she's in her second month or she might have just finished her second month of doing her no buy year. And she is 
very introspective, very honest about her relationship with consumerism, very open about her behaviors and her past consumerist behaviors. She just has a very articulate, clear, interesting, thoughtful way of telling everyone about her no buy. And I love watching that. I feel so comforted and connected having someone else who's doing a similar project to mine and also taking pains and obviously doing the work necessary to talk about it in a way that is open and clear and, and interesting and, and deep. I, I think that that's what I'm kind of getting at. She's digging deep when she reflects about why she's doing this project and about the experiences that she's having doing this project. She does a really fun section in her check-in videos where she talks about the FOMO of the month, everything that she wanted to buy, everything that she knows that she would have purchased before her no buy during that month. That's pretty extraordinary. And Genevieve also, she's multi-talented, but she has a strong background in fashion. And so part of what she loves and part of what she's called to when it comes to buying things is style and classic beauty and things that have that allure of timeless quality. She talks about fashion and about brands in a way that I pretty much haven't really seen on YouTube because she's more into editorial style, I guess, than she is into flash in the pan trends. And she's interested in flash in the pan trends too, but she talks about them as two different things. And I just, I'm, I'm really compelled by that. I feel like Genevieve walks the beat of her own drummer when it comes to style, but she really, really, really knows what she's talking about. So she's so fun to watch. Both of them are so fun to watch and I will link them both down below and I encourage you to check them both out. They have been two absolute lights of my life, two total favorites on YouTube this month. Okay, let's talk about my one beauty favorite. I just put it onto my lips right now even though I wore it in like the past four videos that I filmed because I have had like a singular and total one and only favorite this month and it's this, the Infinite Lip Cloud in Rose Nude. I've had this since nearly the beginning of the year. My sister gave it to me for my birthday in February and I think I might have mentioned it as a favorite then or something. I was into it then, I've been into it all year. And for some reason, after my first of two illnesses this month, when I started wearing makeup again, this was all I, I wanted. I put it on, I sat down at my vanity, I remember it so clearly, when I was ready to put on makeup and go to work for the first time after having recovered from my first illness. And I looked at everything and I saw this and I was like, this is all, this is all I can bring myself to do for makeup. I put it on and I lived and died and lived again. I was just like, this is my favorite lip product ever. Color, texture, scent, wear, finish. There's something about the ever so slight cool undertone that makes this wearable for me on natural makeup days, but it has that little edge, that little like depth, little modicum more of depth that makes it just a little bit grungy. And I don't have anything else like that in my lip collection. And I really love this formula. It's one of my all-time favorites. I have just not stopped wearing it. And it's been in all my Instagram pictures. I've been like tagging it in every Instagram picture. I try to take an outfit of the day picture Monday through Friday on Instagram. I don't always succeed, but that's kind of my general goal. I've failed definitely this week, but since I've been sick, a lot of what I've been doing is just wearing mascara and this and a little bit of spot concealer. That's been my go-to this month. And the love is just strong. It's very, very strong. I really, really love this product. Okay, that's it for beauty, unfortunately, because I just haven't been very beautiful <laughs> this month. I haven't been very beautiful. I haven't been doing that much beauty, but I have been doing other things. And so I have four other things to tell you about. One is this extremely convenient item. When we were going up to San Francisco, it's a six hour drive and Joe was going to be driving. I don't really like driving that much. I'll do it if I have to, but he does like driving. So when we have a long drive like that, he drives most, if not all of the way. And another reason I wasn't going to be driving is that I had a ton of work. I had a bunch of work for this grant writing project that I do. I have a side job on the side where I help write grants for 
a fund that distributes grants to NGOs who are fighting plastics pollution. So I had that work. I had a lot of work for that job. I also had to edit a video and I had some writing work to do. I was revising some of my essays to send along for something. So I just had, I had more, I probably had like 12 hours of work to do, honestly, even more than that. So I was thinking that the six hour drive there and then the six hour drive home would be like a couple of full on work days for me. But my little laptop does not stay charged for six hours. And we do have a converter thing in the car where you can plug in the cigarette lighter to your laptop, but I didn't trust it to really keep charging my laptop or keep my laptop charged for the entire time. But I had to work the entire time. Like I had deadlines in all three arenas and there was just no way that I could face the circumstance where my laptop would die and I wouldn't be able to use part of those six hours there and six hours back for work. So this is all a very roundabout way of saying that I realized that I needed to make a purchase, a tools for work purchase. And if you remember, tools for work is one of my clear exceptions. I'm allowed to buy tools for work. If you can hear that clinging and clanging, Sadie is eating from her food dish right outside of my office door, which is open right now. And her little tag is like clanking on the dish. So that's what that noise is. That's what that little bell noise is. Anyway, I bought an external battery. I did a bunch of research. This one is from the brand Charmast, and it's the Charmast Power Bank. I think it was less than $50. I think this is kind of an off-brand one, but it had really good reviews on Amazon. I will link it. Life changer. Life changer. I don't know why I didn't know about this. I mean, it's not that I didn't know that they existed, but I kind of thought of it as a very unusual thing to have. I didn't think of it as a common tool for work, but I feel so free now that I have this. It's it's a little bit heavy, but not really. It's like a pound, maybe a pound and a half. And I've been taking it with me when I go places. I've been taking it with me when I go to coffee shops. And it if I can't sit at a table that's next to the outlet, I can just plug my computer into this. I think it says it's good for like five charges or something. I mean, it just goes on forever once it's charged up you can use it to recharge your computer a bunch of times. It's something that's very, very useful to me specifically because I'm on my computer all the time and I'm not always in an environment in which I can charge it. And I was able to work all six hours of the drive up and then the drive down to San Francisco both times. I got a ton done and I, I felt really quite smug about having solved the problem that was facing me. So I wanted to tell you guys about this in case any of you has a lifestyle similar to mine in which something like this would be useful. Speaking of San Francisco, while I was up there, I spent one of the nights, we stayed one of the nights with our friends and I love to cook and the friend that we were staying with really loves to cook and we got to talking and she started showing me some of her new cookbooks and I was ooing and aahing, ooing and aahing over one of the books. I actually, what I did was I went through the book and with my phone I took pictures of like half the recipes. I was just like, I'm just gonna steal your book onto my phone. So I took pictures of all the recipes that I wanted and I was really excited to go home and start cooking from the little pictures of the recipes that I had taken. But then my friend surprised me and brought, bought the book for me, which was really amazing. And this is it. It's Adelangi Simple. Adelangi is a chef, extraordinary chef. I first learned of him because he wrote the cookbook Jerusalem. There's a cookbook called Jerusalem. And I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but I lived in Jerusalem as a child for a couple of years in the mid 90s my parents were doing peace and reconciliation work volunteer work and so our family lived there for a couple of years three years and so that food the the food of the middle east the food of jerusalem israeli food and palestinian food is the food of my childhood so I actually bought that cookbook, the Jerusalem cookbook, for my mother for Christmas a couple of years ago. And we've enjoyed cooking some of the recipes from it. I also have cooked a lot of Adelangi recipes from the internet. I frequently search him and find out what he's making, and he's just awesome. He has a really amazing sense of 
how to elegantly construct a recipe and also much of what he makes is flavored with those Middle Eastern spices that I love and that I feel so comforted by and connected to. So th that's this and I have not stopped cooking from this cookbook. We cooked an entire Thanksgiving dinner from this book. The idea here is that the recipes are simple. So most of them have 10 ingredients or less. Many of them are things that you can make ahead and then reheat. It's it's like a Autolinghi cookbook for people on the go, or maybe also for people who aren't as comfortable following long, complicated recipes, which I am, but I don't always have time for. This has been a smash hit in our house. I've loved almost everything that I've made, and it's been a favorite. It's one of my favorite things, if not my favorite thing from the month. Well, probably going to Disneyland with my sister was my favorite thing from the month, but this is a close second. Oh, another thing that I wanted to tell you about is that I decided to carry a nice bag. This is so interesting and very much related to the process of the no buy year. I've been carrying this tote bag. I actually have it here. Almost all year to and from work, I've been carrying this tote bag. It's like a canvas tote. It's from the McDowell Colony, which is an artist colony in New Hampshire that I attended as a writer several years ago, probably over a decade, maybe about 10 years ago at this point. I spent a couple months at the McDowell Colony working on my poems and they gave me this tote and I do enjoy it. It's, I mean, it's just a basic canvas tote. Like you can see what I'm talking about. Um, it's fine. It doesn't clash with what I wear to work on a daily basis and it's very utilitarian, but it doesn't exactly enhance what I'm wearing to work on a daily basis either. I do have a few nicer bags, but I think I was feeling partly like nothing was quite the right size and I was also feeling like I had just fallen out of the habit of carrying my nicer bags. I don't have a ton of bags. As with everything at this point, my collection is pretty edited. Maybe I should make a whole video about it. Would you guys want to see a video about my handbag collection? Is that a thing? But um, I had fallen out of the habit of carrying any of my slightly nicer bags, any of my leather bags, to work because this had just kind of become my work bag. So as, as happens, as still happens once in a while, I got really into looking at bags online. My sister was thinking about getting a new work bag and she asked me if I would help her find one. I always like to help her with research for the purchasing of new things. And so I started looking at bags. I started researching all this, you know, medium sized work style handbags. And I started getting advertised to by a bunch of companies that sell handbags and <laughs> know my aesthetic because they're tracking my every move online. And I just, started wanting a new bag. I was like, I want to buy a new handbag. I want something really beautiful. I started thinking that next year I might save and save and save and invest in a bag. And I might still do that. But it occurred to me way too late. I don't know why it took me a while to like come full circle and think about this. It occurred to me that I could just start I could do what I do on here with makeup. I could shop my stash. I could just start carrying one of my nice bags and that would make a change in my life and make me feel more put together, more editorial, more polished when I walk to work, which is what I was fantasizing about. I was fantasizing about buying a bag from Polen Paris and having it and carrying it in downtown LA and looking really chic and put together. And then I was like, well, why don't I just take one of my old nice bags and carry it in downtown LA and feel really chic and put together. And so that is exactly what I decided to do. This is a bag that I bought from Zara. It's a leather bag. I bought it a couple of years ago when I was in graduate school as kind of a, a work bag, as like a laptop bag sort of, like a combination between a briefcase and a leather bag. And I had just been thinking about it as my professional bag. Like when I go to a conference as a writer or when I go to lecture as a writer somewhere to give a reading, like this is always the bag that I carry because I think of it as looking like a slightly slouchy, slightly stylish replacement for a briefcase. But there's no reason that I can't just carry it to work because I work in the fashion district in LA and because I work for myself making clothes, I had kind of just fallen into thinking that a tote was 
the only thing that made sense that just my basic canvas tote was the only thing that made sense and there was really no reason for me to carry a nicer bag in that setting but then I started wanting to carry a nicer bag in that setting and my first instinct was that I wanted to buy a nicer bag but instead of buying a nicer bag I just started carrying my nicer bag in that setting and it has made me very, very happy. And I've actually been including my bag in my outfit of the day posts on Instagram for the past week or so because I felt like carrying this bag has enhanced my experience of getting dressed in the morning and my experience of walking down the street and just being a woman in the world who cares about aesthetics. So I wanted to mention that because the thing that, that has been my favorite was shopping my closet for something that I thought I wanted to buy. And the last thing I have to share with you is a candle. I finally burned up my last candle and I didn't start the year with very many candles. I'm not one of those people who has like a closet full of backup Bath and Body Works candles, not by a long stretch. I think I maybe had three. It was like there was one in the bedroom, no, no. There was one in the kitchen, one in the living room and one in the bathroom. And so there's really just, three candles in the house, but I didn't burn very many candles over the summer. I kind of think of it as like a winter thing. So I didn't go through them very quickly. A couple weeks ago, I burned up the last candle that we had in our house and I thought, oh, I can buy a candle. I can replace our candles with one candle. So I had a little time after work one day and I actually walked to the Bath and Body Works in downtown LA and I picked out a candle. I picked out this one, it's called Fireside. The notes are smoked cedar, clove buds, and warm embers. And it really does smell like, like a burning log, like a burning fireplace inside when there's a Christmas tree there. It smells like a Christmassy, clovey fireplace, and I love the smell. It's perfect for me. It's very cozy, a little bit masculine, not too cologne-y, very earthy and natural, and... It has comforted me a lot during this crazy month to be able to light this candle once in a while in our house and feel those cozy vibes. And that is it. Those are my four lifestyle favorites, my one beauty favorite, and my two YouTube channel favorites for the month of November. Don't forget to check out Mia's Virtual Vanity and Genevieve Fields here on YouTube. Again, I will link them down below. I think if you like watching me, that you will like watching them. At least I really, really like watching them, so it makes sense to me that it would work that way. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope that you will remember to take extra good care of yourself this week so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. Bye.